Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video. I've been uh, recently drawing a lot of Batman drawings, just for fun. I should probably say that I've been drawing Batman drawings for fun my whole life, <laughs> but uh, more recently I've been drawing them on the backs of index cards. I think I made a video uh, a few months ago showing some of the drawings that I've been doing on the backs of index cards. Uh, they weren't like superhero related, but the ones that I'm doing now happen to be. I guess I've been inspired, but I've been drawing Batman, some Superman, uh, and I might tackle some other uh, superheroes and supervillains uh, sometime soon. But Batman specifically, just because I feel like my whole life I've been wrestling <laughs> with uh, how to draw the best version of Batman that I can think of, which is how to draw him the way I see him in my mind. <laughs> Um, I feel like every artist has their own unique approach to drawing Batman, and that's what this video is actually going to be about. But I've yet to settle on a design for myself that feels right. And so most of the time when I'm doodling or when I'm in my sketchbook or when I have a spare piece of paper, uh, one of my go-to drawings is to just draw Batman. And uh, that's what this little series has been about. So... These are fun because they're less intimidating. I'm just kind of drawing them with markers and ink and uh, a little bit of tone with like a, an old marker that's losing ink. So uh, yeah, in doing this though, I've been thinking about artists who draw Batman in a way that really resonates with me. Um, some of my favorite interpretations of Batman by comic book artists. And so I thought I'd put a little bit of a list together. This is a highly subjective list and there's no order to it. It's just some of the artists that come to mind when I think of great interpretations of Batman. Everybody has their own, I think, version of Batman. I, I tend to lean towards the version where it looks like a guy in a costume rather than the way I think the movies depict him where he's in like this like hard armor. It uh, doesn't really match the, the vision that I have uh, in my head. He looks more like he's in like some sort of riot gear or something like that. Um, and then some comic book versions draw him like he's more of like a superhero. And um, the way I see him is that he's more of a detective than he is a superhero. So he's kind of just like a guy who obviously uh, is very well trained. He's almost like a Navy SEAL slash detective in a really creepy costume. <laughs> it's sort of the way that I see Batman. And um, some of the artists that I really like who draw him really well seem to tap into elements of that. So let's dive into it. The first one that pops up is Paul Pope. I made a video on Paul Pope not too long ago. Uh, so if you're interested in watching that, if you're not familiar with his work, I'll link that either somewhere on this video or down below. But um, yeah, Paul Pope comes from the kind of indie comics, self-publishing world. And he has over the years found himself working on really big properties like Batman, for instance. Uh, I think he's done some Spider-Man stuff as well. But Batman in particular, he worked on a miniseries called Batman Year 100. And his version of Batman in there is cool. I really like it. I think it really touches on the whole like guy in a costume aspect of the Batman design that I really like. He's also referencing, it seems very heavily, like the very original Batman costume. The, the very original Bob Kane Batman costume where uh, he's got the big bat across his chest. It looks like he's wearing some sort of actual like pajama fabric. He's got the high waisted belt. Um, the short ears that kind of almost come out a little horizontally. Um, it's cool. With Paul Pope's work, because he's so brush driven and um, he's got that kinetic, almost organic feel to his art. Uh, I think it really lends itself to the way he renders uh, the textures on the costume. You could really feel like the texture between his his mask and cape is different than the texture of the fabric of the rest of his costume versus his boots versus the belt. It really 
for me makes the character come to life one of the things i also really like about paul pope's work is that he he pulls references from outside of comic art and brings them into that world so uh, you could tell he's very influenced by certain types of fine art um, modern art he's almost impressionistic with the way he puts his uh brush lines down at times and he, he creates a batman that almost is like spooky in a way which i think is the way he was originally intended to be uh it seems like you know when he's first introduced in a comic story or in the movies when like the gangsters see him for the first time they kind of freak out they're so scared to see him i think he's supposed to seem like a scary looking guy and i feel like uh paul pope really captures that there's a part in batman year 100 where batman puts in these like dentures in his mouth with these like spiky monster like teeth and i think it's a way for him to uh further intimidate uh the villains when they first see him so he comes out of the darkness and not only is he wearing this like crazy costume but he's got these like monster teeth so he almost in that scene looks like partly non-human in a way and i think that that was a really interesting angle uh, a unique one that i haven't really seen taken with batman he only really has one mini series where he's tackled batman and it's called batman year 100 but there's tons of like commissions and original art of his online where he's drawn batman so if you're into this stuff i definitely encourage you uh, to check that stuff out next up would be david mazzichelli i've also made david mazzichelli video uh before as well for those of you who are familiar with batman year one probably one of the best if not the best batman story uh written by frank miller and illustrated by david mazzichelli his version of batman also feels to me very much like a guy in a costume you could see a theme here but i think that there's something really cool about depicting batman in a way where he's this guy who is trained in many different forms of martial arts and uh he has great like detective ability but he doesn't have any like particular superpowers that he can fall back on and so the way david mazzichelli even shows him in fight scenes just looks like a guy who knows how to fight rather than someone who's doing some crazy like matrix moves or something like that and um there's like a, a human quality that he's able to depict both while drawing him as bruce wayne and as batman i mentioned this in my other video about david mazzichelli but over the years he's experimented with many different types of styles telling all different kinds of stories uh, not too shortly after Batman Year One, he pretty much left superhero comics for good. And ever since then, he's been doing various types of comic stories, but nothing that has anything to do with superhero stuff. And so his style has evolved and changed many times over the years. And he, he hasn't ever really gone back to that mainstream classic comic style that he was using when he was drawing batman and daredevil but if you go online you could find these like i'm not sure if they're commissions or just one-offs but it seems like for a period there in the early to mid 2000s he was doing these like batman and daredevil pinups they might have been used as bonus pieces in like artist editions or something like that but they're really awesome because it's it's interesting to see him come back to drawing a superhero after decades of not drawing superheroes and see how his approach has changed and how he's bringing in other influences now as he's depicting these same characters that he used to draw and i feel like his newer version of batman um according to some of these uh pinups is like almost perfect it's a blend of some of his old Batman Year One stuff with a little bit more of a simplistic, stripped down, slightly animated, slightly cartoony version. So some of these drawings, to be honest, are some of my favorite of his when it comes to drawing Batman. Okay, so we can't talk about 
Batman, at least I feel like I can't talk about Batman without bringing up Bruce Tim, who uh, Bruce Tim, I think reinvented Batman, the idea of Batman, the design of Batman, the Batman that a lot of people, especially my age, picture in their minds. So Bruce Tim, if you're not familiar, was the guy who designed Batman the Animated Series. Before then, Batman was uh, drawn as a very almost comical, goofy character as it pertained to like TV and movies. Bruce Tim reinvented him for the TV screen in a way that it just seemed to resonate with so many people. He has since influenced so many different comic artists. Um, I think of guys like Darwin Cook or uh, Michael Cho. I think some of the best Batman stories really come out of that cartoon series. And if you ever get a chance to look at some of the behind the scenes footage or behind the scenes books that collect some of the preliminary stuff that went into designing that character uh, and all the characters for that show, it's really incredible. Bruce Tim was obviously very influenced by Alex Toth, uh, with whom I've mentioned on this channel many times uh, and, and have done a couple videos. Alex Toth, aside from being a huge uh, you know, influence on so many comic artists and coming out of the comic world himself, also did quite a bit of animation work. And uh, he designed Space Ghost, whom, if you look at Space Ghost design versus Bruce Timm's Batman design, you can definitely see where Bruce Timm was influenced by Alex Toth's simplistic yet informative designs. So he was able to describe a character and a costume and a personality in a way where he didn't have to use that many lines or rendering because when you have to animate a figure throughout episodes and episodes of a cartoon you really can't create a design that's overly complicated or super rendered uh, so you really have to strip it down to its fundamentals and its basics alex toth did that brilliantly and i think that uh, bruce tim followed in his footsteps and even expanded upon it Bruce Tim has also done some comic book work as well. I wish he did more, uh, but anytime he draws him in a comic book form as well, he's got that same energy that he has in the cartoon. I feel like I should make a separate video on this sometime in the future, but uh, he did a short story. It's called Two of a Kind, and it was part of uh, the Batman Black and White series. It's one of those comics where in a way, you don't even have to read the words. The drawings tell the story so clearly on their own, which is a true testament to the visual storytelling. So uh, in talking about Batman and Bruce Tim, I feel like I had to mention that. But again, there's so much there that I feel like that might even be a video onto itself one day. Okay, so next up is Jim Lee's version of Batman. Jim Lee's version of Batman is more along the lines of, I guess, like the superhero version. Jim Lee, such a great artist, super influential on like an entire generation, including myself. I, I feel like by the time Jim Lee started to draw Batman, he was a much more mature artist. I feel like if he tackled Batman way back in those early image days, it might not have had the same effect that it does now. I feel like he's had years to sort of develop and hone his style and evolve as an artist. And by the time he started drawing Batman, I feel like the stars sort of just aligned and uh, he was able to depict a really cool looking Batman, in my opinion. Like I said, it's a little bit more traditional comic book. He's much more bulky. He's built much more like a classic superhero in Jim Lee's depiction. But Jim Lee also adds that element of realness to it. For one reason or another, uh, he still looks like the kind of guy that could get hurt. And I think that's one of the more important things for me when depicting Batman is that he's like a real person. He's vulnerable. He can, 
he can get shot, he can bleed, he can have a bloody nose. And oftentimes, Jim Lee will depict Batman being like very like battle worn. That's probably one of the things that really resonates with with me in terms of his version of Batman. Okay, now I know I said there wasn't a particular order to this list, but if I had to pick my favorite and say out of everyone on this list and of, and out of anyone who's ever drawn Batman, who the best would be, I got to say it's got to be Chris Somney, even though he's never done like a full published Batman story, not that I know of. But if you follow Chris Somney on Instagram, you're probably very familiar with Bat-tober which is uh, his series during Inktober where he draws Batman every day all October long. And um, to be honest, it's worth getting Instagram just for that month. (laughs) I feel like his depiction of Batman is a combination of all of the great aspects of everyone else on this list and then plus whatever other unique qualities he brings. He's just a highly skilled artist, both a highly skilled illustrator as well as storyteller. And that comes across in his Batman pinups. There's always like a little story behind it. Even if it's just Batman swinging through Gotham City, he always has this little narrative to it, which I think is really great. He's got that animated feel that um, I think comes from a, a Bruce Timm influence for sure. But then he also has the ability to draw him as a more realistically proportioned guy, the way like David Mazzucchelli depicts him, for instance. It feels very much like he's absorbed all these artists' version of Batman over the years and has taken the best out of all of them and created something that's just like, man, if there ever was a Batman comic artist, it would be him. <laughs> For the life of me, I can't figure out why or how he hasn't created a Batman comic yet. But um, I just, I feel like just for the art alone, it would be one of the great Batman comics. So in the rare case that you're not already familiar with Chris Somney's Batman, I would just Google Chris Somney Batman. <laughs> There's so many drawings of Batman that he's done over the years, including all the Bat-tober drawings. So yeah, there you go. There's my list of artists that I consider to have drawn Batman uh, the best over the years. I'm curious to hear who you think has drawn Batman the best. Like I said, everybody's got their own personal preference when it comes to the Batman aesthetic. This is mine. Maybe it overlaps with yours. But yeah, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. Hopefully this was fun and entertaining. By the way, I have a new online class available. I mentioned it in my last video, and um, I figure I should mention it now as well. The class is called Compose a Panel Like a Pro. It's available on Skillshare. It's also available on my Gumroad page if you don't have a Skillshare subscription and if you're not interested in getting a a Skillshare subscription. Uh, So you can watch it either way. But it's pretty much a storytelling class. So it's not like a how to draw class, but it's how to compose a panel, which if you're drawing comics, that's a great place to start. (laughs) Um, And in talking about how to compose a panel, we touch on a lot of other uh, storytelling techniques and ideas that apply to so many aspects of creating comics. I show examples of some of my own work and some of my own process, as well as a ton of other much more famous much more talented artists as well so if you enjoy these youtube videos that i make it's pretty much like a longer version of one of my youtube videos my goal with all my online classes is to make them informative and entertaining uh short and sweet as well i don't want anyone to be like listening to me ramble for hours long (laughs) uh and also to make it as affordable as possible because i've talked about how art school is just overpriced and very irrelevant nowadays, uh, especially in the age of the internet. And so I would love to be able to contribute 
and offer you uh, alternatives to art school where perhaps you can learn some of the same stuff that I learned without having to pay all that money. So if you're interested, uh, I will leave the links down below where you can check out my latest course. Um, I also have on my Skillshare page a bunch of other online classes that I've made over the years as well. So yeah, links down below if you're interested. I appreciate you watching it. Um, I appreciate you watching this video as well. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.